I come from a landlocked part of Australia. I actually grew up living on, on top of a hill and we had uh, little ponds up there. And I learnt about boats by playing around with models. I, I hadn't been brought up in a sailing family or exposed to sailing before. And so the shapes of, of these models I used to build, I would try everything that my mind could think of without having anyone tell me that's what it should look like. The Sail Rocket Project believes it can overcome many of the existing barriers to sailing speed and win back the title of world's fastest sailing boat from Hydroptair. Its unique design has its origins in a revolutionary but obscure text written over 50 years ago by scientist Bernard Smith. When I saw this dusty old book and it said the 40 knot sailboat, I was wondering what a, what a book that old was talking about, what they thought that a 40 knot sailboat would look like. And on the other side of the world, an English engineer was also discovering Smith's pioneering theories. I arrived at the pond with one of my old, old style models, and at the other end of this 800 foot pond, I saw this little sail dart across the water, and I thought, whatever that guy's got, I want one. And it turns out he'd built a model of a Werner Smith type boat for speed sailing. I've never since then looked at another concept. In 2008, Vesta's Sail Rocket 1 set a Venn record of 47.31 knots. As Bernard Smith's research predicted, efficiency through the air was as critical as performance through the water in the quest for boat speed. Most often when we talk about boats, everyone thinks about a waterborne craft that sticks something in the air to catch the wind. This could equally be seen as an aeroplane that touches the water. One of the design specifications for this boat is that in an extraordinary circumstance where it finds itself in mid-air travelling at very high speed, it must be able to glide back into the water and carry on sailing. There's no reason why a sailing boat can't so, provide solutions for uh, future problems that we haven't quite confronted yet. One day sailing boats might come back to the fore and, and the designs they use to cross oceans with or, or move cargo and people around with might be based on these concepts that we're tinkering away with in sheds like this. Many people, many designers uh, optimise boat around power. The more sail area you can have, seemingly faster boat will go. The search for speed comes in many forms. Speed Dream is the vision of Vlad Murnikov, designer of Russia's first ever Whitbread race entry, Fazizi. In 1989, its lightweight and streamlined shape upstaged many heavyweight rivals. And this emphasis on efficiency over power, Murnikov believes, could solve the equation for speed. Now think for a moment if you say, OK, instead of increasing power, I will reduce drag. I will try to make boat as slippery as possible and as light as possible. So a boat will move uh, through water with ease and with less power needed. Speed Dream will challenge every aspect of boat design. So for example, what we do to reduce resistance, we have this very slippery, uh, almost delta shape hull form. That means that boat has a nice, pointy, wave-piercing bow which can actually go through water with, with ease, improving seaworthiness, reducing pitching of the boat and the waves. A 100-foot monohull that can sail at 50 knots in open ocean and cover 1,000 miles in a single day. Let's just imagine that keel can't at 75 degrees to windward and boat heels 15 degrees. That means that keel is completely out of water, flying above the waves. So the, the potential is tremendous. Conventional monohull design has seen a steady increase in maximum speed to the present level of just over 40 knots. Speed Dream aims to move into territory usually occupied by multi-hulls to produce sailing's ultimate thrill ride. The bleeding edge of the sport is, is really where Speed Dream Project is going to be pushing that edge, learning from that, and uh, really sort of opening up people's eyes to something a little bit different. If 
is uh, one of the best aircraft. It's the most maneuverable aircraft that has been ever created. It travels at 20 times the speed of the fastest sailing boat. But the aerodynamic forces that keep an F-18 jet fighter airborne are exactly the same as the ones that propel a boat on the water. The only reference to speed that you have is your speed meter, your Mach meter that tells you, oh, you're below, you're over the sound barrier. The wings of an aircraft, like the sails on a boat, are aerofoils designed to provide lift. You have to have a wing capable of decent approach speed and being able to fight in supersonic and also fighting in a high angle of attack environment. Carbon fiber, composite structures, the wing sail. All these advances have come to sailing through developments generated by aeronautical design. So I think the big work is on the wing as it's going to be on the sail of the sailboat to have that kind of compromise between speed and having the decent maneuverability. The current Formula One world champions are Red Bull Racing. Unlike the quest to build the fastest sailing boat, the design of their car is primarily concerned with aerodynamics and the relationship between the car and the air around it. But just as in aircraft and sailing boats, the modern F1 car uses a wing. Its aerofoil, though, is inverted, producing downforce, not lift, allowing greater cornering speed. But as in all three disciplines of design, the same fundamental principles apply. We borrow very heavily from the aerospace industry, aerodynamics, control systems, um, structures, composites, and so forth. I think that's part of racing car design, just as it is with yacht design. It uses many disciplines, aerodynamics, structures, vehicle dynamics. There are many facets and assets to it. And the car that's quick will be the car that combines all those. Racing yacht design must be exactly the same as that. Salem, Massachusetts a city made infamous by the 17th century witch trials, which saw 19 people sentenced to death for practicing black magic. More than 300 years later, there's another kind of sorcery which is making the city famous. But this time, it's based on scientific fact. The sails are often what decides the outcome of the race. The sail will often define how the whole boat feels, balances, performs, how much it tips, how much it doesn't tip. It's just like the right engine in the right racing car. The winners of the last America's Cup, BMW Oracle Racing, sailed to victory with a rigid wing sail larger than the wingspan of a 747 airliner. The aerodynamic efficiency of this adjustable aerofoil was twice that of a comparable soft sail. The days of the traditional sail plan seem numbered. What I see coming are rotated masts that are really leading edge to a wing, and the sail becomes the back part of the wing. And that could actually eliminate the need for jibs, uh, which is little sail you normally see in front of the main to give it a nice leading edge. If you can have the mast do that job, it will make sailing that much easier because you, you eliminate the need for one more sail. The design innovations which grab the headlines may still be years away from reality for the average sailor, but the lag between development and implementation grows ever shorter. With the advent of cheaper, you know, faster computers, the simulations are becoming more and more reality. So a lot of the projects we work on, you know, that we wind up doing now in six months, even 10 years ago are, you know, a couple year projects. So I think people are gonna be able to explore the boundaries like they never have before. The science of sailmaking, I think it's going to serve us well because hopefully it'll let us replace power boats, make sailing so easy the guy that wants to just turn a key and go out for a Sunday afternoon cruise will be more inclined to go back to sailboat. Also, if we get gasoline prices at $5, $10, $20, who knows where it's going to end up, all of a sudden the sailboat will become very attractive again. For thousands of years, 
we have wrestled with the challenges of using nature to propel us through the water. Searching for the most effective way to make the best use of the elements around us. But in seeking to understand how to make a boat sail fast, we can also unlock many other areas of knowledge. We can gain a greater understanding of how blood flows around our bodies. We can use less of our planet's resources. And we can find more efficient ways to generate power. There's a certain purity and kind of beauty about using nature to propel yourself. You know, I don't think that's ever going to go away, no matter how good technology gets. Um, you know, there's still going to be nothing like being on a boat in the water, using the sails to get yourself somewhere. But for all the technology, the science, and the sophistication, our fascination with gaining mastery over the wind and the waves is perhaps best summed up in the words of the visionary Bernard Smith. To one who has turned lifeless materials into a thing alive, there can never be anything more wonderful than the sailboat. The sailboat offends the senses of neither fish foul nor man. And to make it go faster is to make it even more a thing of freedom and beauty. Next time on the Rolex Spirit of Yachting, we follow in the footsteps of ancient history from the town of Gaeta in Italy, around the mystical Aeolian Islands to the Finnish in Capri, in the Volcano Race part of Rolex Capri Sailing Week. <laughs>